Tired of paying 10%, 15% or more to sell your cards, comics and digital collectibles? How does 1% sound? Too good to be true? Well, not anymore. MySlabs.com is the web's premier user-driven marketplace for buying and selling slabbed cards, sealed wax, and now slabbed comics and digital collectibles. So the next time you're forced to pay 10% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com and join the 1% revolution. What's up, everyone? You know what night it is. Wednesday night, off-centered with Dustin the two weeks later, I still have not started to rebrand my channel, even though everyone is saying I should, Personal Finance Dad. And uh, we have a very special guest tonight. This is the first time we're having him on. He is the president of SGC Grading down in Florida, Peter Steinberg. Uh, we're going to talk about the state of grading, what SGC is doing, if you're not very familiar with them, and how competitive they are in this incredibly increasing uh, competitive market of sports card grading. So uh, it's going to be a great hour. I uh, hope you're ready and you already know the drill. Welcome back. Now let's get to work. Let's bring on the guest that you can't wait to see me mute. Dustin. What's up? How What's are we up, doing, man? man? Uh, I've got, so, I've, I, so I've got an idea I wanted to run by you actually. And it's good that we're live. Why not? Hey, why not just put it out into the universe? So um, just thinking about different rebranding ideas and notice that there's a lot of viewership that's looking for kind of that, you know, losses videos or how, you know, how I lost money, how I've, how, you know, things have gone badly. I've noticed that there's a lot of attraction to that. So what about failing at sports cards, dot, 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 and life? Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, they say, they say the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you fail at sports cards, then you fail at, in life. Well, no, it'll well. be like, it'll be like, ooh, feeling, failing at sports cards, that's juicy. And life, oh my God, I gotta watch this guy. This is gonna be a train wreck, I can't look away. Well, it's like you open a pack of cards and like you get this amazing hit and then you accidentally drop it in like the dog's um, water bowl or something. And, and, then, and then your wife yells at you all in like 15 seconds. And she the says, entire, like, I want a divorce and walks out. And then the that's entire like, show, the entire show is just absolute like hobby atrocities. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I say run with it, man. Run with it. I, I see. I would watch I was that. kidding. I was actually kidding. But now I'm like, huh, maybe that's a maybe that's a thing. Maybe that's an idea. <laughs> so you talk about Mr. Beast has nothing to do with like anything beast. Well, just be like Mr. Fail, Dr. Fail. <laughs> It's just like it's short. It's shorts of me just like falling down the stairs. You know, like Dude, I'm watching. I'm thumbs up in that. Guys, let us know in the comment section if you want Dustin to put out like jackass like videos. Hey, it's it's the it, we're just whatever to get attention these days, right? That's how just it like works. A, a little kid swinging a baseball bat and then hitting you in the nuts, like type of. Speaking thing. of trying to get attention, I noticed on Instagram that you have paid a girl to hang out with you, a woman. That's actually you're put you're posting photos. The, the reason why I don't buy into it is because you have like the whole modeling background. So I know that like, you know, you have like photos of like the fake family and everything else. <laughs> Brad has got these like props, these, that, these female props. And these, that, it's that was like, just another I'll, shoot. I'll give you a hundred dollars. Just do this Instagram post for me. She's like, fine. God. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't really have much of a rebuttal. I was looking at the comment section. Great to see you, TJ. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, same girl. Dating life is good. Uh, she's actually coming back from Vegas right now, so she'll be uh, over later, and we'll we'll hang out. Good to see you, TJ. Brian Sherlin, go Bucks. Gold nineteen fifteen now, and Brady. Oh yeah, gold. Yeah, Brian is a big gold investor, so gold and silver. So crazy stuff in the uh, stock market and Bitcoin. I, I'm going to be looking into all that soon. Um, what about you? Do you do any of that other investing besides video games that you've kind of like given up yeah. on that channel and then? I don't know, comics and I just I don't have time for I don't have time for the other channel. I haven't had time for it. But to answer your question, yes, I, I do uh, all the things I've got. Awesome. the I don't I don't have gold bullion in my house, but I've invested in gold and I like in crypto. I want to see you wear a giant gold chain. Like I, I bought a gold oh. chain, like just a giant gold chain instead of actually investing in stocks. Yeah, like or jo or Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow yeah. style. There you go. There you go. In fact, that'd be a good look for you. That, that's except, you except, no, no, no. I actually will get one of those, but it's not going to be with real diamonds. When, when the reporter was like, "Are those? Is that all real?" and he's like, "Yeah, I think I make enough money for it to be real." And it would be like, "Nope, I don't make enough money for this to be real." C can you rephrase it to real glass? Because then the answer is, "Yeah, I make enough money for this to be real glass." 
The guy at the flea market said this was real, so I'm going with it. <laughs> All right, let's say hi to a couple more people before Peter uh, ditches us and is like, this is stupid. Uh, Troy, great to see you. Mike C., what's up, man? You're always here. Great to see you. Corey in the house as well. AJ Rose from Japan, always here uh, from the other side of the world. I don't know, what, what what time is it in Japan when you hop on? Is it like 6 in the morning or something? It's got to be 10 hours difference, 12. Look at this. New Zealand, hot fan. It's so cool to see people from other sides not just like Canada, which is amazing Canada, but literally the other side of the globe yeah. here on YouTube and, and uh, joining us. So very cool. Good to see you. Hobby Champs, Stephen Ryan in the house, Michael Stone. Favorite time of the week. Uh, that is that is the biggest compliment uh, Dustin has ever received. Great to see you, Brian. That's why I joined is just for guys like Brian. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> While my wife is yelling at me all week, I just come on and I get that. I'm like, I'm recharged. That balances it out. <laughs> Cardboard Carolina, good to see you as well. What's up, Brian? Always here in the house. Corey, what we buy, what we sell, and what we drink in. What, you have your Diet Coke? I've got water and coffee tonight. Mm. Yep. I got my SGC colored mug, my SGC colored shirt. So does Dustin. So Yeah, we're it's very all... SGC tonight. Yes. Yeah. And we're, we're going to bring him on any second now. I just want to say hi to a couple more of you guys. Michael Stone, there you are. Recent, Dr. recent pickup. SGC recent pickup. What do you got there? So 97 metal. Yeah. 97 metal platinum portraits, Troy Aikman and a 10. Not easy to get the 10. Okay. Anyway, he has no pickups. So yeah, we'll get Peter's take on that card. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before we get going is that my slabs is the sponsor and they've just released uh, raw cards and raw comics on their site. And it's 3% seller fees. I think because it's raw, it's going to have a bit more customer service and, and returns and it, you know, just things like that. But 3% uh, for raw cards and comics on my slab. So shout out to them. All right. So Guest free show on the oh man, that's 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 a compliment right there. Guest free show. You sure? After we bring Peter on, you'll be like, no, just stick with the guest. Just keep having Peter on and, and his <laughs> other guests. All right. So let's bring him on. We'll say hi to some of you guys um in in the coming uh minutes uh, as we get the, the show going. Is I she closer hit, to becoming your one on one? I want to hit Peter with a heavy question right out of the gate. Like Let's I'm do it. like I'm Geraldo. I'm gonna hit him with one right out of the gate. What's up, man? What's up, guys, how's it going? How are you? Great, great. I gotta say, this is one unique channel, man. I've been sitting back, I've been sitting back smiling. Look at you know. We, we had Dr. Beckett on a couple of weeks ago, and he came on. He's like, "Is this like a comedy show?" I'm like, <laughs> right. I don't know. If that, I don't think it was a compliment either. It's like he's like, "Oh, look at the time. We gotta get off." I, I hear you. Brian doesn't even want me here at all. So. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is that everyone's like, oh, why do you talk about dating? Why do you talk about all this stuff? And I'm like, there's other sponsorship opportunities out there. <laughs> exactly. we got to expand exactly. beyond just cards. I'm like, I need the Chipotle sponsor. I need the, the Hinge or Bumble sponsor. I need to start wearing like Levi's or, or I don't know, like some sort of like just normal guy clothing with a label on it. Just to Dustin, uh, Dustin, gave you the Dustin gave you the alley-oop with the whole modeling plug right there. I heard that. I'm trying. Well, he's kind of blowing the hinge opportunity. Now it's going to be like weddings.com or something because Brad's getting engaged <laughs> or it's going to be like Kay's jewelers, you know, or whatever. Um, hey, they might pay more. They might pay more. <laughs> anyway, uh, great to have you on. I know you're down in Florida, so it's a bit later for you. It's about nine o'clock tonight. Um, let's just dive in. Uh, what, what are you uh, up to I'm right gonna... now? Like, well, go, yeah, go ahead. Start, Peter. Well, I, I mean, you know, we can start wherever we want. We have a handful of questions, but tell us a yeah. bit about yourself personally, because you are a young guy. You're president of SGC, a big company, one of the top three in grading. Um, who are you and, and how did you land this this role? Because, I mean, a lot of 27 year olds are like still trying to figure out life. And I know that because I'm 35 trying to figure out life. Yeah. Uh, um, so I guess to start, my name is Peter Steinberg and and and. Um, you know, I was born in Long Island, New York, where I, I kind of found my love of cards and collecting many different things. Um, from there, I kind of took the, the straight and narrow path that any middle class guy does, basically, which is that I was told by my parents to do good in school because I'll need a job one day. And I told my parents that, you know, I want to go to the Mets game and get autographs or go to the card store and rip some wax. And, um, you know, just kind of that that normal upbringing, I guess. I played baseball my whole life, big sports fan. And um, essentially, I, I found my way to Florida State University after high school. 
and um, graduated. And, and I graduated in political science because I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I certainly knew that there was no chance I could do what I love because I didn't think that what I love could pay the bills essentially. And there was that kind of opportunity. And um, upon taking, you know, three or four jobs out of, out of college, I basically saw an ad on um, online for SGC. I, I read about it and just kind of was like, this is just too good to be true. I entered SGC as a hardworking, I guess I was probably 22 years old or so. Um, and from there, man, the rest is history. I got to tell you, hard work, hard work pays off. But even more than that, when you truly love what you do and you truly want to, um, you know, I guess make a company better, it, 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 it all kind of takes care of itself. But I've had my fair share of luck. That's for sure. How long have you been with them, Peter? So I've been, I joined the SGC team and I believe it was January or March of 2018. Okay. Um, yeah. And at that time I started, uh, I was actually hired for customer service, but in my interview, I basically told them kind of my, my insane passion for collecting. And they thought that I was better suited to work in SGC's research and identification department. Um, those individuals are basically in charge of correctly identifying your Steph Curry rookie card from your Steph Curry rookie refractor, um, your T205s from your T206s, really all cards. Um, it's a pretty complex job that I loved a lot and it only spurred my love of collecting even more. Yeah. You know, how, did, how was it when, sorry, Brad, how was it like, cause when, when you came on, it was more of a vintage place like SGC was a, really the place to go for vintage stuff but that's changed dramatically over the last two years how has that transition been for you because and, and I'm assuming that's right in 2018 nowhere near as much like ultra modern modern as what you guys are seeing now I, I could tell you guys stories very true stories that I remember very vividly it wasn't so long ago where I, I have a picture on my cell phone of um, the the gentleman who was in charge of our rec uh, receiving department. So basically unboxing the orders, making sure all the cards are there, that kind of thing. Um, I have a picture on my phone of that individual opening. I think it was a 300 card modern order. That was such a big deal that like I took that phone call. I had to you know tell the gentleman I was speaking to why to choose SGC for these cards and you know how it'll it'll all be worth it in the end and that kind of thing. Um, and things are very different now, to say the least. I mean, you literally, Dustin, when I first got to SGC, you could count the number of modern cards in our building on one hand, it seemed. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's not so far off. And, um, you know, a lot of the times markets are the way they are and, and things kind of make sense. And then other times there are things about a market that, that appears that it needs to catch up a bit. And, and that just, to me, was, was as glaring as anything could be because I knew who our graders were. Um, I knew who were the, the, the individuals in charge of assigning the grades to these cards. And I knew that they had just as much knowledge over modern cards and modern grading as, as the T206s when they were grading, you know, multiple Honus Wagners. So I really just looked at it like, man, someone's got to grab the microphone and, and catch some people up on what's going on here. And it started on kind of a more grassroots basis, kind of, you know, collector to collector. And from there it grew to, you know, using microphones like this one and speaking to numerous people at a time. And with that education, I think it was it was an easy sell. You know, it's an easy sell because we truly we know cards really well. You know, Peter, I was going to ask, we're, we're kind of beyond this topic, but, but I was going to ask, how much did going to Florida State hurt your chances of landing a job? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, partying. I mean, if, if you want to be like a there, man, professor of partying, when it comes to that, <laughs> yeah. you want to knock the knolls. I'm a little, I'm a little taken back. So. I, I will say this, and I, I went to USF, which I kind of regret because it's just in the middle of Tampa where I grew up. But I went to U, uh, FSU, I think two or three times during college. Those were some of my favorite memories because it was a fun school. So I, I want to give props there. But of course, growing up in Florida, there's also this UF versus FSU rivalry. USF's irrelevant. UCF has actually taken over in terms of actually being respectable. Um, but I had to just uh, throw that in there. I'm a, um, I'm a middle child. So my older brother was a Seminole and I didn't even apply to UF. It was one of those. Once he got in, I hated the Gators. So it was basically FSU or bust. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> In terms of where SGC is at, I think card grading is the, probably the craziest nuance of the hobby because you're literally taking a card and then its value can 10x or more based on 
not only the number, but also the the brand, like the actual company that's attached to it. And so right now is a really interesting time because we had the, the PSA, which is the biggest company in terms of volume, uh, close their doors for a lot of the, the lower end services. And these other grading companies, uh, SGC included, have really benefited from from that. And so the, the big question on my mind is how many people out there are holding on to cards that they're waiting for PSA only, right? They're not, they're not considering BGS or SGC or anyone else. And uh, what would your, your message be to them if they're just holding out for PSA to open up and that's it? And then also if PSA does open up at some point in the future, I don't know if it's a year, but for something affordable, what would SGC's plan be, knowing that that might swing things in a, a new direction? Sure, that's a that's a loaded question there, Brad. Yeah, that was like nine questions. Right, well, I'll do my yeah. best to answer. I'm just going to chill. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so here's here's the deal. Um, the way that I look at things, first off, I am a realist. I am. I I try to be as real as real gets. Um, I believe PSA, if I'm not mistaken, closed in March of 2021. And if there was someone kind of uh, going out there on a podcast or something like that, claiming that the reason SGC is getting all this business is because they're closed, I'd say, well, that's incorrect because we we had a nice amount of business before they closed. However, they would have a point. The bottom line is, is if there's no other option, it makes total sense that you're going to SGC or you're not going at all. Here's what I'd say though. We are now in February of 2022. OK, and we are continuously, you know, we, we made the mistake of making an Instagram post the other day because that Instagram post said, hey, guys, we just want to let you all know that we had a record mail day today and we appreciate your support so much. And what we realized after we made that post was that we just we, we have broken that record, I believe, twice since we made that post. And it's kind of obnoxious to keep going out there just talking about these records being broken. What I'm trying to say, Brad, is that there is no doubt in my mind that when it comes to getting our foot in the door, getting a a, a tuxedo in these new collections, absolutely. PSA closing down has has been, I'm sure for some collectors, the only reason that they shook hands with SGC for the first time and introduced themselves. What I am so proud of is the fact that these collectors are clearly satisfied with the service, satisfied with the, I, I guess, the consistency of the grading, um, and for that reason, they're they're coming back, and there's a lot more of them all of a sudden than there was in March of 2021, uh, which is which I'm very proud of. Yeah, yeah, you guys definitely delivered. That was the thing, and you've been really, really consistent over the last you know 10, 11, 12 months. Um, I want to shift a little bit over. Hold that, Brad, because yeah, we'll, we'll get. To, well, this was one of our, our our questions we discussed earlier. Great question. Yeah. We'll get back to that in a second. Yeah, hold on that. Um, so recently, you had two Pokemon cards that you guys had graded. You figured out that you know they were they were fake or altered or something. There was a problem. You did a good job of getting out in front of that news, um, and great job there. Uh, my question, kind of on the back of that, is a lot of times I will hear from folks that are really just kind of PSA only. It'll be like, look, you know, I go to PSA because they've got the best guarantee. If there's a problem, if they grade an altered card or trim card, they have the insurance in place and they will take care of me if that happens. What is, you know, what's the the SGC policy? Do you guys have a similar insurance policy in place? And maybe I should already know this, but um, I'm not dealing in five thousand, ten thousand dollar, fifty thousand dollar cards, so it's yeah. not even it's not top of mind for me. Right. But you know, how do you guys handle that? Yeah, I mean, I'll say one thing everyone is in their own personal situation. I mean, I deal with collectors, Dustin, that could buy my life 50 mm-hmm. times over. You know, they've got- How much is that, by the way? <laughs> How much <laughs> is your life? <laughs> Just curious. My, my point <laughs> is, guys, that I deal with the highest of high end and, and I deal with collectors who are just PCing this stuff because they love it. And the bottom line is, is I think it's, it's, it's almost unfair to assume that that guarantee matters less to people simply because they're dealing in cards that may be worth 60 or $70 or even less than that, rather than the really, really high end cards. But, but anyway, I'll, I'll kind of get into it. So, you know, I'm going to answer this question by giving everyone a brief kind of almost, almost taking you back to that initial question about us getting the modern cards in. You guys know how you break into an industry. You do things better than your competitor. And what that means is that when you damage a card, you know, it's really going to help if you not only give that submitter fair market value for his card, but you give them a little kiss to go along with it. 
you throw them an extra 50 bucks or five grades or, 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 you know, two shirts, a little care package, those kinds of things. The reason I'm saying that is because our policy and you can take pretty much anyone's word that's had a card either damaged in the possession of SGC, I guess, or worse, um, we make it right and then some. We are not in the business. We have not had the brand strength that PSA has had up till this point. So we didn't have the ability to say, you know what? You put the declared value down for 600 bucks. Sure, I know one just sold on eBay for 2,700, but you put 600 bucks, so I'm gonna pay you that. No, we're, we're the individuals that get, you know what, that just sold for 2,700 but that was two months ago. And we know that the market's up since then. So we're going to give you 3,200. If you think I'm lying, ask one of these people that have been, I am the guy who gives the direction to the individual who's on the phone. And that direction is always the same. And it's basically we lose, they win. And that's just our motto. And I guess the reason that I haven't just said, oh, of course we pay declared values is because we don't, we pay more than that. We pay what's right, which should be declared values if submitters are following the rules. But I think we all know that if it does you a little good to call a card worth $14.99 instead of $15.01, you'll probably go the lower route. We are not here to, we, we want to make it easy. We want you guys to enjoy your experience with SGC. We have bigger plans here than nickel and diming people that we've wronged because we either lost a card or graded a card incorrectly, like you saw with those Pokemon cards. So I'm happy to say that one of those collectors has already been made, let's just say, very whole. It's probably a good thing that that, that collector happened to uh, have that mistake happen to him. And we are waiting on a response back from, from the other individual. We've sent out uh, a few emails, and we're anxiously looking forward um, to hearing. I, I want to say we have the card in-house, but we're just trying to resolve this and and we're we're the ones leaving voicemails so you know nothing we okay. can do. you know one thing i, I want to point out though you, you said we lose they win but really when you think long term you're winning by having them win now you're going to be winning long term because I, I think of it as like any business that makes a wrong right and not just like refund but just wow you really over delivered is a business that I want to do business with it because every business, whether it's a restaurant and the soup's cold or there's a little roach scurrying out the door or something, whatever it is, it's, it's like every single business, a flight, an airline, when the, the flights are canceled and there's a problem with their computers or whatever, I'm like, okay, but what are you going to do about it? If you live long enough, you know that every company, every industry will make some sort of mistake. The ones I'm paying most attention to are the ones that are saying, we own the mistake and not only are we going to make it okay, we're going to make it so over the top right that we're going to build more loyalty because now you know that if we mess up again in the future, you're going to be completely taken care of. You, you won't have to worry about that. And so I want to acknowledge well, you. And, frank, and frankly, too, we need the, we, we need more of those stories out into the hobby news land. You know, because the, the hobby news is full of fake slab, fake card, this, that, whatever. It would be great to get more of those stories uh, from grading companies of this is what happened and this is how it was it was made right or made whole or whatever. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not gonna I'm not going to name any names, but I will say this: we were approached by an individual um, who kind of not only brought this news. Uh, I don't know if it was to light initially, but caught wind of this and has imagine a platform like like you two do and decided to talk about it on the platform decided to really talk about it, just really harp on the fact how wrong we got it. That individual messaged us and asked us a, a slew of questions, almost hoping that we wouldn't respond. So then there could be a follow-up video saying, I, I talked to that grading company. They didn't even respond, guys. I told you how bad they are. Well, he hasn't responded to us because we basically told him exactly what we're doing to make it right. Um, and, and there's been no response from him. So my point is to that, Dustin, is you are so on point when you say that the problem with the news cycle in our hobby is that people are getting half the story, part of the story. Just for example, we put a card up on our Instagram yesterday. It was a Wonder Franco uh, Black Parallel rookie, which we were super, super excited to see because it's so soon after the product and, you know, whatever it may be. The card graded a nine. I can tell you, I had the card in my hand and I actually turned to the grader who graded it. I said, man, you nailed it. I said, it's mm -hmm. not an eight, five. It's not a nine, five. It's a nine. And unfortunately, when we snapped the photo, I'm not going to lie, but it had two, I would call them touched corners. So if you look at the bottom left and the top left,
you'll notice the bottom left looks. Oh, weird. yeah, yeah, yeah. See that? So yep. that I can say definitively, I had the card in my hands, guys. We're talking maybe because it's a, a black slab on a black bordered card. Maybe because my guy who's a professional photographer has, you know, these major light beams coming from every angle on the card. But I can tell you that card is a nine. You know how I know? Because I was trained by the grader who's been here for 23 years grading cards. That's how I know that's a nine. My point is, if you look at the comment section, we have people grading this card from from this image. And, and my point is, is I'm not going to respond. But, to those but a nine. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not going to respond to those people and say, guys, it's Peter from SGC. I saw the card. I promise it's a nine. Those corners yeah. don't look nearly as bad as they do in that photo. Well, and that I black border, what? if the black border gives everything away, it's oh, all it's all there. I yeah. can promise you, Dustin, that anyone who's going to hold that card physically is going to agree that the card's a nine. And anyone who thinks it should have been graded harsher is not following SGC standards. My overall point, though, is when I read comments like that, I almost want to make a quick video and say, guys, the, the card's a nine. The image does not do those corners much uh, good. It doesn't do them justice. But my, I guess what I'm doing, guys, is I'm just venting. Because what you said, Dustin, is so on point that if only collectors knew the entire story. I think what they'd realize is SGC has the single best guarantee in the hobby, which is not what you put down under declared value. It is fair market price plus whatever we think is fair to make you happy on top of that. That I put that into practice every single day for years now. And like I said, anyone who's had the unfortunate circumstance occur can definitely vouch for that. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's interesting. I, I want to touch on the third party submitters and, and um, how, mm -hmm. how that works, because I've also noticed that SGC pricing for third party submitters is lower than what you offer directly. Is that correct? And that I, I don't think that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't see that as the industry standard. I, I look at it like, oh, that, that's cool, because it looks like it's a, an aggressive marketing approach saying, hey, I want these card shops and these people to gain business from um, their customers to, to like for them to to put it out and then for them to make some income and for it to really grow that way while a lot of other companies or, or the main ones will have direct to consumer as the lower price and then the card shops will have to mark it up um, before you answer like why why are you going that route or why does SGC go that route one thing I wanted to point out and I wonder if it's true is you said you, you played baseball your entire life, right? You were an athlete? An, an overweight one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was a okay. pitcher, so Bartolo Colon on the mound. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I was going to say, because I don't know if it's your athletic, um, the way you were training as an athlete, but I, I see it come across in the way that you're, you're treating being president of SGC. I see, like, a lot of competitiveness, and maybe I'm, I'm wrong on that, but I feel like you're really um, ambitious and, and very competitive with your approach with SGC versus kind of laid back and and kind of waiting for things to fall into place and i don't know how uh, accurate that is or not but it's just something that i'm, I'm it's, reading it's from very right accurate here. it's very accurate and i think we reap a lot of I, I don't know i we reap a lot of benefits from that kind of mentality because believe me it's top down if you think i'm the only one in here i you know i right before i you brought me on live i'm checking a text from a little group chat i'm in where someone sent that a, a really prominent collector wrote something awesome about SGC. My point is, it's, it's not just me. What's going on? Nolan's the man. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> um, anyway, I got distracted. My, my, yeah, it happens to work. My, my overall point, guys, is that I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little insecure by my uncontrollable energy and passion for the hobby you know right now I, I keep looking at myself i'm like pete take a deep breath your face is getting red bro your face is getting red bro <laughs> um but you know the bottom line is guys is it works and i don't mean it works because the cards are coming in i mean it works because you know that guy nolan who you just read across the screen is a collector who's been in this game for a very long time time this person knows what he's talking about and i watched a video yeah, he's, he's, he's very highly of you guys and, mm -hmm. and that's why I say that, that, that means yeah. the world to us. So if, if this, again, if, if I'm the guy who's helping make that happen, then I, I just feel blessed that, that who I am, you know, can, can kind of plug into this, this amazing team and help move it forward. But yeah, I think it definitely helps the, the energy, I guess. Brad, going back to that, that first comment, how do you, so going back to the group, 
the group yeah. subbers. How do you build those relationships out? How do they become a group sub? You know, how does that kind of work with SGC? Um, and then I guess, you know, with the, you know, the, the Mark's card situation. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. We already covered that. <laughs> that, that was minute two. <laughs> Actually, wait, before I, yeah, I'll go back to my idea. I shared this with a couple of my other hobby friends too, because everyone likes all the drama, you know, the hobby drama stuff. I was thinking of switching to failing at sports cards and life. So it's just uh, all the everything, just bad news all day, every day. And, and that way you can succeed in life by showing everyone how bad you're failing at life. Hey, you, you can succeed better, at your YouTube you channel. If you want to feel better about yourself, just watch my channel. We'll, we'll, you'll be there fine. You go. All right. So Mark's card situation obviously is, you know, it's out there um, with PSA. How do you guys stop that from happening? What's what's different? You know, how do you guys kind of, you know, uh, vet, you know, group subbers and, and that stuff? So I can tell you one thing, um, you know, stopping something like that from happening is I, I can't stop someone from doing a bet. And I don't even know the whole story. I got to tell you guys, like I, I'm probably not the most. In, this is not my team that this took place with. Um, and I got a lot going on. So, so I, you know, I understand the details at the 30,000 foot level, I guess it seems like funds were, were mishandled, whether intentionally, unintentionally, I, I can't control people obviously, but what I can control is that if anything were to ever go wrong again, it's what I told you before Dustin about making it right. This is not a team that makes its supporters, the people who chose us in this crowded field of grading companies to go with, to have them lose because they chose to go with SGC. An another thing I should probably add and, and probably should have led off with is the fact that, you know, the thing to remember about SGC's model is we do not believe we are a storage facility. Okay, you should have your cards in, in, in your hands for the vast majority of their lifetime. What I mean by that is you send me your cards, you're paying me to grade them. I'm supposed to grade the cards and ship them back to you. I'm not supposed to have them in a warehouse for a, a crazy amount of time. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to not have a million card pile up coming down the pike and, and kind of that would cause any corporation, any organization of any kind, a, a real problem. Uh, what I'm trying to say is we are a fine tuned machine. It's, it comes in, it's processed and it goes out. So if, a, if an issue were to occur, it would be on such an acute scale, especially in comparison to what we're talking about here, that we are just talking literally peanuts compared to what that situation has erupted into. I could just guarantee to everyone, in addition to vetting the individuals that we have kind of essentially middling these transactions, you know, um, I could say that we carefully vet them. And in addition, if any of them decided to change on a dime and be different than they've been in the hobby for years, believe me, this brand would bear the brunt of that, not you for supporting us. So um, we've dealt with issues in the past, though, you know, it, it, whether it be, um, I guess, everything under the sun, it, it's happened. The reason it hasn't made headlines is because we're not talking a million cards here. And we're not talking millions of dollars here. We're talking, you know, an order of 120 cards. Um, you know, something happened. And that's when I step in and say, you know, approved, do it, whatever it is, you know. But it, it just, it can't happen here. It, like, truly, um, it, it, it's not possible because we don't have guys, enough cards in the building. Do you have to, do you have to pay up front, you know, or is it like with PSA, the, the bigger issue is just that you pay when you get the cards back. So the money was just kind of held there over a long period of time. And then it wasn't there, you know, with, um, you know, with you guys, is it, is it the same or do you, you know, do, do they have to pay up front a portion or how does that, how does that work? So what I believe I, I can say one thing. So, so our, um, director of business development, our account manager, you know, these individuals are in charge of making our supporters lives as, as painless and stress-free as possible. However, remember guys, that that's not only the individual that we're speaking to over the phone. Because that individual we're speaking to over the phone represents hundreds, even in some cases, thousands of other individuals that are sending their cards to that person. So in addition to wanting to make their life as seamless as possible, dealing with SGC and running their business, we also want to make sure that the supporters who are giving the cards themselves are protected. The reason I'm saying that is because if I'm, if I'm not mistaken... I believe that certain submitters under the right circumstances do have the ability to pay at the end of the process. Certain submitters I know prefer to pay up front of the process. The one thing I can just say again is these people are 
incredible. I mean, I don't want to name one name of these people because I don't want to leave out one of our amazing group submitters, but I, I can I can vouch for the fact firsthand that when handled correctly, when scrutinized properly, and when I guess these these people have have us as a brand as air cover, this is so good for the hobby that these people have this option. Remember, only if they want it. No one is no one is is you know only allowing this or only allowing that you know the collectors remember that are submitting to group submitters have the freedom to do so and have made that choice they save a few dollars on their grading fees it's it, it's a good thing when again when handled correctly but i just want to say that that mark's card situation um is awful i mean no one no one wins no one wins with that one you know it's just terrible that so many people have been affected and it Really a crappy thing to happen to, to our hobby. Real quick, uh, and we definitely have some questions uh, around the slabs and growing um, internationally. I saw some good questions in terms of growth uh, because we know PSA, I think, just bought like half of New Jersey for commercial space <laughs> earlier today. Um, but in terms of vetting the third parties, do you have like a checklist? Is there something like you've got to be in business for three years, five years, this amount of volume, this? Because, I mean... If you have a, a brick and mortar store, which, you know, Mark's Cards did. And, and when I went there, very nice guy, very nice family. There's nothing that there were red flags or anything, but there are honest mistakes that could happen. There are times where someone there's one bad apple in a, in a, a store or in a, um, a business that can do things differently versus the, the values they set up. So is there a specific um protocol or not protocol, but like set of standards in terms of who you do business with that you can share? Or is it more just like a relationship that you you feel out over time? I would say imagine almost somewhere in between those two. I mean, I'd be lying if I said we have this checklist in business five years, you know, a, a BBB rating of this, you know, the hobby just doesn't, the hobby its own thing, man. It's very, it's very um, unique in the way that it operates. And I think, um, you know, we basically dig in when we need to. Remember, a lot of these names are so, 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 so big in the hobby and have been around for so long, so uh, well trusted with a stellar reputation that I'd say most of the time, um, you know, it, it's those individuals who are accounting for the majority of these submissions. But in the case, we definitely do our research. We spend some time on the phone with this individual, with these individuals, I guess, outlining uh, certain circumstances, how, how they'll play out if they take place. In other words, almost getting out in front of the issue. And if we do get to that point of, of uh, being comfortable enough, feeling like this person will help I guess, grow our brand by making our supporters happier than they otherwise would have been, that's when we say, okay, let's do it. And then, you know, from there, we obviously have a, it's, I guess, a, a different set of, um, I don't know, a, a different set of requirements needed to maintain that relationship and make sure things are going well. And, um, you know, I, I, I'd argue we're, we've done a really good job because it, I, I know I have a personal relationship with a lot of our um, group submitters, just, you know, they helped us get where we are today. And they seem very happy with us. I know we're very happy with them. I know their supporters are very happy with them. So again, I can't speak for the Mark's card situation. All I can speak about is SGC and everything is groovy. So, you know, it's, it's, it's great. All right. I got it. I'm going to hit on a lot of people are asking about the slab, the actual look of the slab. Of course, it's always you, a huge, huge conversation. Oh yeah. Thanks, Troy. Good to see you, buddy. Um, so as far as the slab goes, and I kind of had this idea and of course it's like, what the hell would we switch from? You know, it's like a lot of people like the tux and some people are like, yeah, but I would, you know, I'd like it to be a little bit more colorful or, or, or whatever. And you're never going to make everybody happy. But what if there was kind of like a, a second option that you guys had, like a second design that was like an optional thing? Like, hey, if you want to go with the tux, click here. If you want to go with the other one, the, here's our new design, click here. And if 10,000 people or whatever, if, if it's like a, you know, a, a huge group of people like the second one, then maybe you keep that as like an A and a B choice because it, it's weird how the hobby is a lot of times, like the look of the slab is, is really important to a certain part of the, the hobby. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, just there's certain companies that just thrive on just the fact that their slab looks good outside of, uh, of the other factors. Is there a chance? And I know like the idea, I, I can't imagine all the work that goes into manufacturing and ordering it and all that crap. I'm sure it's an, insane, but what about like a second option? And then if, if it just doesn't sell, nobody's interested, 
then it's like back to the drawing board. Then you come up maybe a few months, you know, six months later with another second option and whichever one catches hold, then you have like an A and B choice. Sure. I think one thing regarding that, uh, Dustin, you know, something Brad said was kind of the, um, I don't know, the ambition to, to move this brand forward, almost this, this fight that we have in us. That's a real thing. And we didn't, we don't, we don't have that reputation because we knock ideas that we're not going with right now, or because we shoot down some really interesting thoughts that collectors may have that, that SGC hasn't yet adopted. What I'm trying to say is it's not my job to tell you all what you should want or what you, uh, I guess, should desire when it comes to your cards, whether that be a, a different look or an alternative option. It's my job to basically make sure that I am serving the vast majority of the collectors as effectively as I can. And the reason I say that is because, Dustin, please find me a holder and a label that let's just say 80% of the collectors in this hobby love. Because if you could do that, I'd adopt it on day one. That's you guys, the thing is, is you guys already have the grading reputation down. Like It's like you have everything. And then I love the slab. I love the tux. I mean, I have no problem with the tux. But I feel like that could be a barrier to entry for some people that are just stuck on another, you know, another look of a. Of sure. A and the issue, I could tell you one thing, man. You know, I, I, I said this actually the last time I spoke. I think I used the same example. It's funny. It came to mind again. You know, we made an update about a month ago, a month and a half ago. And that update involved a, a small price decrease on a certain subset of levels, along with value adds, just pure <laughs> value adds, you know, Um that is objectively good news because as I'm lowering your price, I'm giving you more. That is my favorite news to give. That is, it's awesome when I can do that. The issue with holders is that this is not an objective value add. This is totally subjective. While Dustin is dancing around the room because he's so happy his SGC cards are about to look even cooler, all of a sudden, you know, the next guy over is, is you know, throwing up his hand saying, I'm never submitting another card to them again. Well, and actually, very, Joshua, Joshua Simons, he makes a good point. I'm actually talking about the label, not necessarily the holder. So, sure. that's so where even, no problem. So even the label, even the label, okay? Yeah. Just because believe me, guys, please trust me. And, and if, if anyone hasn't seen kind of the evolution of SGC, we have gone through so many improvements in such a small amount of time. It is insane. And that's not me patting ourselves on the back. It's just me trying to convince all of you that we really do care as much as we said, we really do care about all of you. The issue is that even the label, okay, is very subjective. And while this guy loves it, this guy hates it. The one thing I will say, and please rest assured, guys, I'm looking into it. I'm looking into everything under the sun. I promise you there's something sitting right here on my desk that I can't show you. But if I showed you, there would be a lot of opinions about it. Let's put it that way. And I want everyone to know that if, if one person were to make a suggestion, hey, you know, I'd love SGC just a little more if you would do this. My wheels literally are spinning. It, it doesn't take an out, a public outcry to kind of wake me up from my desk and realize that my company needs to be better. I am so dissatisfied with the state of SGC right now, and the state of SGC has never been better. That I promise you guys, it's not just holders. It's not just labels. It's technology. It's, it, I don't want to get too far into it. You know, Let's just say SGC is going to be going to shows. Why is SGC? I have this amazing team, guys. I am, I am, I am just a representative, I guess, of, of such an amazing group of people here. And the fact that those people aren't shaking hands with the collectors, supporting this brand, thanking them firsthand is a travesty, a travesty that we're going to change. So we're going to be at shows. Our technology is only going to improve. I am looking at every design thing under the sun. So my point is, is it's a tough decision. It's subjective. But please know, guys, this is... I, I'm not, I'm not just, you know, taking a, uh, you know, I'm not taking a back seat here. Okay. I'm very involved with what all of you are saying. And all I want is to make all of you happy. Sometimes it's easy, like dropping price and giving more. Sometimes it's very hard where I have to upset this group to make the larger group over here feel, feel like they've been heard. Yeah. Um, well said. And um, I want to go back to Troy's comment just because he asks about subgrades but before i asked that i just found it very ironic that dustin who i've been trying to <laughs> beg in the whole 
all of YouTube has tried to beg to change his name is asking all, you all about of, different branding YouTube. and different colors and different ways to market yourself. I'm like, Dustin, you got to change your YouTube na uh, oh. name, man. My YouTube name is done just fine for me, man. Like, I don't know why is, you're so is worried. Is fine I, good enough? I, I can't it, believe you're losing hey, sleep. Hey, real this. quick, real quick. Peter, are you okay if SGC is fine, is doing just <laughs> fine, or do you want to be number one? I don't want to get in between. I don't want to get in between. <laughs> it sounds like Dustin's just good coasting. No, that's not how we do it. We're going for number one. If you're not first, you're last. I'm going to put that from real, I'll, I'll, put, I'll change to the real comeback card investor. <laughs> like, what the hell? I want to say, I, I just want to say, guys, real quick, in the middle of this this adorable banter here, I, I just I just want to say, I see we're at 45 minutes. I was told this is going to be an hour. I said it. I've said it before. Guys, it's 946 here. I'll be at work in the morning. I got nothing to do, which means, like, I, I want to answer all these people's questions. It means a lot to me. It's why I, you know, agreed to come on the show. And I, I just want to be clear that if we cut, it's because of you two. I am not taking <laughs> you off of this live stream. I'm enjoying my time and I want to answer as many questions as possible. Well, Brad's fake girlfriend eventually is going to come over to his house. Uh, maybe that's what he said. So he'll probably know oh, she canceled. Oh, oh, darn. Oh, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, um, but, okay. But going back to the subgrades though, is, yeah. is that a, a, any progress, any ideas there? Cause obviously that's going to be a question that uh, will continue to be asked until, yeah. you know, there's a definitive it's, answer. It's a question I have been fielding for a very long time. And the answer is simple. I just told you guys that, that if there's something you all want, I want to give it. And I will say there are a lot of people that ask that question about subgrades. I'm going to give a very honest answer. And I, I, the last thing I wanted to come off as please everyone, the last thing I wanted to come off as is me bad mouthing a, a different way of doing it. I'm just going to be honest with you and, and, don't hold it against me, okay? Here's the deal. You don't grade cards on corners, centering, edges, and surface. That's, that's, that's not how we grade at SGC. There's a lot more to these pieces of cardboard than just the surface, corners, edges, and centering. For example, you know, the, the example I like to use is, you know, what, what do 4.5 edges look like? Okay, or what do the corners look like on a Colgan's chips card that is a circle? It, it doesn't make sense. So in other words, guys, I could give you subgrades. We could just put in these four numbers, average them out. It's my machine spits out a grade with the algorithm that I programmed it to be. But the problem is the SGC experts who have been here for 25 years almost, who have trained every grader in our building, they wouldn't like that very much because that machine would be putting an eight on a card that they believe to be an 8.5 or a seven on a card that they believe to be a nine based on the fact that those four subgrades just are not effective at calculating a card's overall grade. The truth is, guys, if I were to provide subgrades to all of you, they would not fit on the label because there would be 35 of them. That's how many factors these individuals have to take in and assess when, when looking at your cards and to hamstring them into four specific categories that then all have to spit out an accurate grade is just entirely, entirely ineffective in our, in our opinion. Okay. Right. I, I do want to say yeah. this though. Yeah, the yeah. reason those questions come in is because collectors want to know why their cards graded the way they did. And that is so unbelievably reasonable for God's sakes that someone wants to know why the card that they thought had a good chance of a 10 all of a sudden it's coming back in an 8.5 uh, guys it's like welcome to the current state of the hobby we need to work on that don't we that is what sgc is going to be doing i'm telling you i'm working on many 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 things here i can only do so much at a time obviously because i need what i deliver to go well but please understand guys that we you need to know more and we totally recognize that but I would be just totally kind of BSing all of you if I even floated the idea that we are going to be grading cards on corners, edges, centering, and surface. It's never from SGC. It's just not going to happen because we'd be lying to all of you and kind of going against what we believe to be the right way to grade these cards the way we've been grading them since 1998. Well, if I know in other collectibles, they have like a surcharge for grading notes. So, and I, but I'm, I'm sure that's also a customer service nightmare. Wouldn't, wouldn't that well, be nice, like, Dustin? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, but, but, but also I can imagine you, your customer service team would be busy. 
you know, I mean, like, sure, sure. But you yeah. know what? It's, it's the same way. Um, man, it stinks. I can't reveal too much. I want to tell you, you know, you I can can reveal. Here with everything. I wish I could say <laughs> yeah. everything. We're, we're friendly guys. Like, I, I mean it guys. And, and I've said this before, do the math. This is a healthy business to be in having a grading company in the year 2021 guys. We are not in the business of nickel and diming and grabbing every last penny that we can from the people who have helped get us here. OK, when I can provide something, I would so much rather provide it free of charge. And hopefully, you know, hopefully when you look at, at what we've done here, it's it, you know, it doesn't sound like lip service. But I mean it when I say, guys, that that I am there's a lot that still needs improvement, you know, and not not just at SGC, this entire industry, the way this whole thing works. I'm here to help make it better in any way that I possibly can, even if that just means showing who I am and my, my own personal opinions on it and the way SGC approaches these issues. But I want everyone to know that we are totally in favor of empowering you to understand more about grading the scale. We want to increase the chance that your cards get of, of, of receiving those high grades. However, subgrades aren't going to happen because we don't believe that they produce as Again, just us, just SGC, just my grading team. I don't know the grading team over there. I know as much about them guys as you all do, and that's not the company I'm running. I'm just here to say if I went into my grading team and I said that, I'd have a lot of resignation notices right here, and they would say this kid that hijacked this brand has totally killed the integrity of what I helped build back in the year 2003. And if you think I'm lying, I'm going to introduce you to some of those individuals on Instagram, on YouTube in the coming months. They're real, and they would not like that very much. And then the, the label will probably look like, what's it, C CSG, which looks like a, a medicine bottle that you find in your, your grandma's bathroom. Where well, it's look, like I, I, the one thing I can say, I am I am so not in the business, so not in the business of talking about these other companies. Okay, believe well, me, I'm a collector. I have my own Brad. Like unbelievable. Just such a I, role. I make fun of, oh, yeah, bro, that's not your role. My role is to make fun <laughs> of that medicine bottle label, which looks like a prescription well, bottle. Let me say for, this. For, I, for I, the, I can the, just say this. Diabetic medicine. I can say this, guys, and this is not for, for my sake. I Believe me, I'm so lucky. I don't deserve an ounce of pity here that this job is stressful. But I will say this. On behalf of the other guys, on behalf of all the graders, it is incredibly hard. Now, we want to make sure that these companies are well intended, okay? Because that that is there's no excuse for having intentions that go against the, the collectors of this hobby that keep that engine moving. But I will say this, when well intended, please all the collectors out there, just understand there's a reason, okay, that, that SGC is one of essentially three companies that's been around for a very long time because this is near impossible. It is so, so, so difficult. So it's almost like, guys, it's easy to knock it. And I know we all will. I have my own preferences on my collection. But just keep in mind that, believe me, it's you take the seat if it's so, you know, it, it's not an easy thing. Oh, oh, for sure. Well, I mean, the, the funny thing with the, the slabs and the labels is that there are pros and cons to every single one based on every single person you ask. I exactly. Even card by card, card yeah. by card, Brad. I mean, you look at some cards and our holder, I look at it, I say, okay, that is the, I wouldn't rather that card in any holder in the hobby. But then there are other cards I receive, you know, I have PSA cards, there will be a, I don't know, maybe it's a red PSA card that, you know, matches the label. And I'll say, man, that looks nice, you know, so I totally agree with you. So I'm going to share my idea real quick. For one, I want to shout out uh, my friend Trevor Olson, who actually looks like Aaron Rodgers. I might have him on a video, but he just texted me that he's watching. So what's up, Trevor? He, he's just a guy here in L.A. I met, and uh, he's big into cards. We got to shout, uh, We got to go over Dex Flow's question as well. Thank you for the, the super chat. But I wanted to sh show you this because if this is a thing, hey, I think thanks, Dex, but we're moving on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Make sure you go Hold back on. to Dex, Brad. Oh, hold on. OK, we're going to go to Dex as I pull this up, because I have to share this. This was like something that I thought about a couple of weeks ago. It is crazy. However, I thought, hey, what if you had a slab? And what if it was on the bottom here instead of the top? And the reason why is because it was a hinge, not like the dating app hinge, but a hinge. And then it would actually stand up. Now, maybe that's crazy. Maybe it's not feasible. But I wanted to show it because if you can get a card to stand up using the label, I think that'd be a game changer. But just just sharing that. 
Got it. Yeah. My screen is half cut off by the question, so I couldn't really see, <laughs> couldn't really see a lot of it. But That's the whole thing. Yeah. No, Damn, the, Dex. The, the truth is, the, the good news, guys, is look at how much this, this hobby has innovated from the year, let's say, 1995 to 2018. The answer is not much. It was, it was a lot of the same. And you look from, let's say, 2020 to now, and it's just a completely new hobby. So hopefully that trend continues. Let me just keep making things, you know, I guess, better for all of us. Well, here it is. If you want to adopt it, it's on you. I just want to take credit. It has to be called the Brad Slab, and and we'll mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be good with that. Gotcha. Go, back, go back to Dex, Brad. Yeah. Okay, back to Dex. Dex, thank you for the super chat. He wants to know... Uh, you got cards, comics, money, VHS, video games, toys. Why not newspapers? He has 50 copies of the 9-11 New York Times uh, you know, from September 11th just waiting to be graded. If you got everything else, why not newspapers? Is that something that people are requesting? Is that something you've thought about? Um, they're kind of like being very really honest. I would be very, I, I'm not here to judge someone's opinion. I'm just here to, I guess, state the facts on it. That is the first time that that has ever been requested ever. So the answer is no, I, I don't get that often, but I can see why someone who has 50 copies of the 9-11 New York Times is itching to, you know, cash out on that, that, I guess, free investment. I don't know. I would say it's a matter of time, Dex. Just keep holding on. It might be another five <laughs> years, but keep holding on. You know, it's interesting, too, because there's almost a parallel between that. Something you'd probably see if we all looked at that newspaper, we'd probably think it was fascinating. You know, just a total time capsule into that into that unbelievable day, you know. But at the same time, I often look at cards and I say, oh, my God, look how amazing this is. Yet I could go on eBay and buy it for thirty five dollars. You know, I'm talking really, really old, like antique trading cards, you know, so the same way that that newspaper might hold very little value, despite it being very cool. I think we see that same thing in the hobby, you know, sometimes where something could just be awesome and you look at its price and, you know, you're kind of taken back by how affordable it is. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. Are you going to be in Atlanta this weekend? So, to, to be totally honest, Dustin, we don't know what the first show that we're going to be at is because I, I can say this very, uh, I guess confidently, we don't we don't pursue something unless we are sure we're going to get it right. We are just not in the business of over promising and under delivering. So when we go to that first show, we are going to be damn ready to have a great, um, just a great presence there and really make an impact. But uh, what the first show is and what will kind of kick off that that new campaign, um, I, I just don't know yet. We're we're actively working it out. Oh, so you've got so you have a new marketing thing that you're working on. I just meant in general because I, I saw you guys at the national. You were set up at the national. Are you just talking about in like that particular show? You haven't been in contact with them, the Culture Collision show. Well, no, I'm I'm more talking about the fact that you know I don't know if I call it a, a marketing campaign as much as just an objective on a, you know that the company has to have more of a show presence, more of a a kind of oh, okay. shaking I, hands I and meeting yeah, people yeah, yeah. and getting you know allowing them to get to know us. Um, that's what we want to do. And, you know, we don't want it to be a one and done. We want to prepare ourselves. So, you know, kind of on the, um, you know, flick of a switch, we can just be at the show and, and have a great presence. It's just, you know, it's easier said than done when your turnaround time is as, um, yeah. you know, reasonable as ours. It's, it's not an easy thing to maintain. It takes a lot of hard work and, and a lot of focus on the numbers and things like that. So, um, you know, we want to continue to add without taking away and going to a show prematurely would certainly take away from that uh, operational efficiency. R real quick, I thought this was funny. Corey, you nailed it. Sorry, Dex, you're caught. You, you uh, put 50 cents in, took all the newspapers. Solid ROI regardless. Um, and I, I saw you, Shane, ask this earlier as well. I want to end on something um, light like this, like what's in your PC? What are you looking for? But the one question that uh, we didn't really touch on is just the expansion in terms of is SGC looking to have a West Coast presence or something international? There's a lot of people in this hobby that are here on YouTube, on Instagram, and they have a fraction of the resources as we do here in North America. And they're just dying for retail and for grading and for customs to not be such a nightmare and all of that which to me is like one of the most exciting upsides of the hobby is just the fact that there's so many people that can't even get involved that hopefully will in the next couple of years what's on the horizon in terms of sgc expanding or at least talks of expanding to other uh, parts of the country or maybe internationally 
Well, I can say this. Um, we hate customs as much as all of you do because they give us just as many problems, if not more, um, uh, as far as shipping cards back to you all. And, and you can probably see it is very difficult to operate under those kind of parameters. I can say this. SGC has done some experimentation. We actually had an office that we treated completely as its own satellite. Okay. Um, and it has gone unbelievably well. What I'm trying to tell you all is I am as confident as I can be that if, if we were to fly a few very key members of our team um, out for a few months, we could essentially create SGC, assuming that the cards are fed either from one source or our graders are going with them, of course. Um, we've, we've essentially done it. Um, so we can be kind of McDonald's if we want to be. Um, and, and I, I try not to talk a big game when I can't back it up, but I'm very positive. We could back that up. We have, we have seen it happen. Uh, so if I wanted to go to Texas or New York or California and open up an SGC satellite office, I'm very confident that I could do so successfully. Um, however, there's no point of doing that unless I feel it's in our best interest at that moment. Right now, we are focusing on our home operation. There's still a lot of growth to be had. And I think everyone could agree that we're keeping up quite well. Um, we're also looking to grow this brand and expand our footprint. So again, we are entertaining all, um, all options, I guess, that included. One of the subsections on my board is, is definitely expansion. Awesome. Uh, we definitely want to respect your time. It's been about an hour. I want to shout You're not out respecting Kevin. my time. It's you want to get off of here. I want to respect my bladder because usually I'm like 30 time. minutes and then I have to run to the restroom. So I want to, well, we definitely want to hit a couple more questions if you do have the time because we know well, there's course, over 200 you know, I have, people. I have as much, guys, my job is very stressful. I don't get to speak to our supporters or even just collectors out there all that often. I thoroughly enjoy it and I want everyone to feel truly heard. I don't want them to feel like some guy just came and get a sales pitch on his company. I really ask tough questions. Uh, I'm, I'm ready guys. I'm Brad, why don't, Brad, why don't you mute, go ahead and take care of it. And he can, he can talk about the pre-war stuff. Go ahead. I want to hear this. That's why Dustin, you can hear from the back. All right. <laughs> uh, shout out to Kevin for the super chat. So I, I have heard of SGC as being the, the company to go to for vintage and I never really knew the backstory or why that is, how that came to be. But uh, Kevin asked, why is SGC the gold standard for pre-war? What, what, what's the history there? So remember, this is a question. It, it's hard to find an, like, there is no right answer to that question. You know, I mean, I think we all assume gold standard with high market values, I guess. And that that is the free market at, at its, you know, going freely, I guess. The, the reason that I would say, in my opinion, and this is just an opinion, why SGC is the gold standard for pre-war would be that when our company was founded in 1998, we happened to have access, and shortly thereafter, we happen to have access to some of the greatest vintage experts out there. That's essentially what took place. Our first few, I guess, graders are some of the most knowledgeable, skilled hobbyists in, in the country, essentially. Um, SGC has bred an incredible amount of hobby talent. So back from the days when we were a much smaller company and, you know, certainly a lot less modern collectors had heard of us, uh, we were just breeding these unbelievable vintage experts, um, the, the owner of Robert Edward Auctions, Brian Dwyer, is an incredibly knowledgeable individual on all things the hobby, not just vintage. I'm proud to say he came from this organization. Um, the individuals running Heritage Auctions, they were grading cards for SGC back in the day. And those individuals know their stuff. I know this firsthand. These guys really know the craft. So I think that the reason that SGC kind of carved out this niche early on as being the pre-war, you know, gold standard is because we knew the cards the best and, and our reputation uh, in the hobby, the, the individuals collecting those cards trusted that to be the case and, and were willing to, I guess, respect the brand when it came to secondary market. Just my opinion, though. Nice. You know, I'm just I'm just giving what I think, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um let's end on something a bit lighter um just as a collector who what do you collect what are you excited about on the card side what are you seeing from tops and panini and even thoughts on fanatics like from from just the collector side you know instead of just the business side what are you excited about i mean i'm 
truly, I am really excited about a lot. What gets me really amped, I am a guy, I have as equal an appreciation for modern as I do for vintage, which I think is actually pretty unique, which is something this hobby needs to change. I shouldn't feel like I'm a unicorn because I'm a millennial who loves and appreciates tobacco cards. That there, There's a problem there because I always say the modern cards are going to become vintage and not so long ago, the vintage cards were once modern. So all of these values, they're just going to age out in time if all our kids don't appreciate Trey Young, Luka Doncic, Derek Jeter, you know, Frank Thomas, kind of kind of the, the newer greats. Um, as far as what I collect, I collect, I try to stick to, I guess you'd say the goats if I can afford them. You know, in, in baseball, I'm talking Willie Mays, Ted Williams, Wagner, obviously, Christy Mathewson, Walter Johnson, Mickey Mantle, um, those guys from a vintage perspective. I have a lot of Acuna stuff. I have a lot of Tati stuff. I have a lot of Soto stuff. When it comes to football, um, who do I like in football? I, I'm kind of light on football right now, actually. I tend to think Herbert is, is great. I mean, the Burrow... I don't believe in as, as much. I just think that people have to realize that there can't be seven all-time great quarterbacks at, at once. It, it probably isn't sustainable. So it's almost like pick one. You know, I have a few Pat Mahomes cards, which I'm definitely uh, feeling, you know, good about. I like Pat. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I break cards like you guys do. But where I was going with that originally is what gets me amped about the hobby is, you know, Panini, I've noticed, has some really, really unique parallels coming to life. I actually learned this myself. I did not know this. Um, so there's a subset, to my understanding, or excuse me, an insert um, in Panini that's basically permit to dominate. OK, and then in their second year, it becomes license to dominate. That to me is, is brilliant. I think that's the coolest mm -hmm. thing in the world. I love that. I love when these cards are well thought out and you almost feel like the collector, the person paying so much money for these is well respected. Like they actually tried for you, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think the XRC obviously out of select is such a cool idea if you ask me. Um, but then you also, you know, I'm a card collector too. Sometimes I'll see, you know, the manufacturers doing things that I don't particularly care for, but it's like different strokes for different folks. You know, some people think that the Jordan green PMG is like the greatest card of all time. To me, it's not, I have to be honest. That's just not what I grew up with. It's not my cup of tea, but who the heck am I? I'm just a collector, you know? And what I try to preach is just everyone kind of, we're all weird guys. We all love trading mm. cards. We care enough to be on at nine o'clock at night talking about them. Let's just treat everyone nicely. It really is so crappy when people, I see people everywhere, just, just really being jerks. It's just like, why guys go be jerks in real life. This is cards. Be cool. <laughs> yeah. My I'll oldest stop son. stop bullying Dustin. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my oldest son was like, there's actually dr like r drama and sports cards. Like you're, you're talking about like sports cards. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's funny. I, but that's been very special on my end. Cause I have to say guys, and I show our team this all the time and I just give them so much, so much praise. Seriously. You know, if you look at SGC's Instagram feed or when we come out with an update, there is such an overwhelming amount of positivity. I literally have chills talking about it right now. And I very rarely, I'm not here to say that we're the only brand that, that invokes this positive feeling, but at a time when grading in general is, is really been, I guess, not the best, obviously we all see how what's happened in this industry, the, the, pains and the challenges it means so much to me when people are just happy like i don't care don't don't submit cards guys if you think the grading fees are a little too high for your comfortability level do not that's okay but when we post a card if you think it's cool say it's cool you don't have to talk about how it you know grading is a farce and we're all crook it's just why why who is that helping you know so i like nice people and our team is filled with only good people. We are a team that is built head to toe of the individuals that when there's that old lady lady leaving the restaurant, you hold the door for, <laughs> you oh know, there's just, I, this is my company that I've been blessed to run. And I refuse to hire jerks because I've worked next to a jerk before and it's no fun. So we treat each other nicely. There's just, it's, it's a, it's an easy prerequisite. <laughs> what? Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> awesome dude um well peter we appreciate you coming on is there any final words you have for anyone that uh is in the audience that maybe hasn't considered 
using SGC before? Uh, anything you'd like to share just about maybe the rest of the year or anything um, else? No, you know, I got to be honest. No, I think what I want them to know is that I come off guys here speaking with Brad and Dustin at, at you know, 10 o'clock at night as a very, this is Pete. This is who I am. You know, this is the collector side of me. This is the real side of me. But I, I just want everyone to know, by no means, guys, do I want you all to take this as, as me being anything but dead serious about our team's goals and having those those supporters of ours feel really good at the end of the day about investments that they've made in our brand. If you own an SGC 10 of a card and then SGC does something, you know, real out in left field or, or you know, goes out of business, you're you're not in a good place. And I just want everyone to feel very secure um, with the SGC cards they've had. I think it's fair to say, guys, the gap is closing, and rightfully so, if you ask me. But um, please just know, guys, that we are very real, and and don't hold that against us. You know, it, It's not a bad thing that a grading company is actually telling you guys, you know, the answer is that you're, you're interested in hearing. You know, and I think that if we if we make it hard on not me, but if we make it hard on them, it, it does make it harder for them to grab the microphone. So let's just be cool to everyone. And, you know, Pistol Pete, what's up, GD? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, too, on that know. note, kind of on that note, too, if you want to if you have obviously not naming names, but if there are positive stories, things that happen at SGC that you want reported on. Uh, you know, Brad and I can talk about those things. That's what we do. I, I can so. go on. I mean, yeah. And I don't want to keep. You, I, mean, I don't. I don't want to keep you guys. But guys, yeah, I, yeah, I, I was telling stuff. You know that comes up. If there's specific cases where it's like, hey, this happened. This is how it, it turned out. Great. You know, let us know. I okay. So and and I don't. I don't want to sound like a. <laughs> I don't want to get over passionate here. I don't, wanna, if you want. I don't want to sound like so. a jerk. But, but <laughs> Dustin, I, <laughs> Dustin, I mean it when I say, man, like. That's why we need more attention to SGC. And I don't mean the public's attention. I, I mean, that's why I need to do a better job because it is every day. It's okay. So I'm all right. Brad and Dustin, I was in the waiting room and we were talking and, you know, introducing ourselves before the show went live. And I mentioned to you, wait, guys, wait, wait. if this is a really good story, wait till we're offline so I can take notes and make a video on it. <laughs> it it's, it's really not. It's really not. I'm just saying this. I just got back, guys. I had this podcast. Obviously, you're on the West Coast. I, it's 1015 my time. So I had some time to kill before closing up shop at the office. And this interview, I went to uh, Ale House right right next to the office and just went with our employees it was a random group of employees it's not like this is a you know a presidential meeting and dinner where we're talking business we're just hanging out and we're talking cards and we're talking the progress we've made the progress we still need to have you know the pain points of what's going on every single day those stories exist my verification team my research and id team how do you think they're learning cards guys they're teaching each other some of them are pokemon absolute experts some don't know charizard from blastoise but they could name you every hall of famer you know who's ever been inducted and my point is is like i believe it or not everyone i am the big 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 boss here okay and and i mean when i say that my people lift each other up we are a team i always say it's impossible for you to get a raise while that person's getting a demotion you know, usually they come in bunches. And what I mean by that is that we rise together and we fall together. And that mentality is what has allowed us to spread our expertise that, again, that group of individuals has had and, and share it. In this industry, historically, just so everyone knows, here's a bit of insider knowledge. The graders don't like to teach, guys, because they like to make fat paychecks. And if there's so many graders, then the demand for that grader goes down. They're very territorial about their knowledge not at SGC. Our best graders are the best because they're the best teachers. They want to lend a hand. They've been doing this far longer than some others and they want to catch them up to speed. <laughs> Dude, well, I, I got to say, man, um, you're definitely one of the most charismatic and um, convicted uh, people we've had on the show. And I think this is the first time I've seen people actually ask for jobs <laughs> via <laughs> the live stream so for, for which brings up another question Thanks, what is my cut for being the the recruiter i, I definitely feel like i need a recruiter cut but also it, it's Brad's just always trying some, to get <laughs> hey i got the business mind earlier in the show i was thinking grading companies it's it's like you want the quality there but it's really about perception like you perceive this company to be, this company be higher than this one and it's just like public perception 
Lincoln got Matthew McConaughey. Like, what, what's the Matthew McConaughey of cards that can just like take SGC's perception even higher because the quality's there, right? You know, you have the graders, you have everything. It's just, I think you coming out and being on these shows and people understanding who's behind the scenes, who's in charge of SGC uh, is definitely helping. So I, I, I want to say like you're a good representative, a good spokesperson for SGC, and you just happen to be in charge of it all too. I appreciate it. I just, yeah, I want to make clear, I'm not a spokesperson. I'm actually the guy who makes sure the cards are going That's out, the cards are coming in, you know? I'm just telling the truth. My preparation, guys, for this interview, remember, I prefaced it and I meant it. By saying, guys, ask the hard questions. I don't need the softballs to knock them out of the park. Guys, the fact is, I, I didn't have to prepare because I can just answer the questions honestly because I'm doing the right things because I care about your cards. I care about all of you because at the end of the day, I am you. I am the guy who I'm like the end collector who makes sure that all the middlemen in between me make a profit because I overpay for my cards because I want them so badly I can't resist. So my point is, is, guys, I am blessed to be in this position. I just want my team to continue to grow, to offer more and more opportunities to the amazing people who helped get us to this point. And we are so not done yet. We truly are just getting started. We're hungrier than ever. Your support only fuels us further. And um, yeah, the bottom line is, guys, thank you so much, by the way, Trevor and everyone else commenting. Guys, they can't keep up. I really appreciate all of it. Um, the bottom line is, guys, I'm not looking to sell anyone on SGC. I'm just looking to give collectors what it seems they enjoy seeing, which is what actually happens at SGC. Who's actually the individuals in charge of making those tough decisions or, you know, whatever it may be. And um, it just means the world to me to, to interact and see, again, positivity, man. I, yeah. I, I, I could tell you stories. I wish I could get it all out there. I want to talk for 10 hours about my hobby stories. When I was a kid going to the card store with my dad, my grandpa buying me cards for every holiday, you know, I believe me, I'm, I'm really you guys. I, I was hired at $12 an hour at SGC to basically um, input cards into our system and learn them and, and try to make the company better. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I really have your all of your best interests in mind. I, I, I promise. I, I promise. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean I'm the perfect guy for the job. It just means that you're not going to find someone, I promise all of you, who cares more about this hobby, making it better and, and growing it. Because if we're not growing it, we're, we're not in a good place. None of us are. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate you coming on, Peter. And based on the chat, we're definitely going to invite you back. We want to have you back more and more often um, because th this we had over 200 people on there, I think like 235 or something like that. Uh, and just the response has been great. So if you'd like Peter to be on again in the future in a couple of months going over uh, news and other things going on with SGC, just let us know in the chat and in the comments section if you're watching this later tonight or tomorrow. Uh, definitely thumbs up this video. And if you haven't given SGC a shot, just check them out, look into them, maybe talk to your local card shop, see if they have a partnership and, and a good deal and and uh, give them a shot once. So uh, we appreciate you coming on. Hang around. We're going to end now. I'm um, going to show the My Slabs video and then we'll chat with you in a second. Sound good? Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Got it. Tired of paying 10%, 15% or more to sell your cards, comics, and digital collectibles? How does 1% sound? Too good to be true? Well, not anymore. MySlabs.com is the web's premier user-driven marketplace for buying and selling slabbed cards, sealed wax, and now slab comics and digital collectibles. So the next time you're forced to pay 10% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com and join the 1% revolution.